DJ Now we'll move on to the main vocal elements. And I wanted this track to have a really glitchy edited sound to it. So rather than letting this main vocal play like it did in the original track, I wanted to give the vocal a heavily chopped and edited sound. So what I did is I took a piece of the vocal as an audio track and I right clicked on it and I selected slice to new MIDI track. Let's just find an audio track so I can show you how to do that. Basically, if you just click on the track here, you right click on it. You go slice to new MIDI track. And what you can do is you can select how you slice it. And I just selected the 16th notes. And then slicing preset, and I just use the built-in preset, then click OK. And what that does is it creates a new MIDI track and lays out all the slices on your piano roll. So if we go here, and we ensure our monitor's on, you can see each one of these slices. Each one of these slices plays, and so I basically started playing her voice all chopped up on the piano roll. So this is how it sounds. Let's just take a look at the plugins I'm using on it. So, in order to add to the glitchiness of it, I'm using a couple of plugins here. These are Ableton's built in MIDI plugins. So, you can see here, this one's a random plugin. I'm using a pitch plugin, which has some automation on it. Then I have a note length plugin. And these are all running just before the rack here that has all the slices in it. So what that does is my MIDI track that's coming in, it'll take those notes and it'll randomize them. Then after the vocal slices, we have Sugarbytes Wow plugin. And this is running a high pass filter that's being automated by the LFO, has a bit of resonance, a bit of overdrive on it. So it filters the sound as it's playing. Then we have a bit of EQ, a bit of compression, and a very short reverb from the, this is a free VST again by Tal, and just a little bit of wet signal coming in and a relatively small room size just to give the vocal some air around it, some space. In the second breakdown of the track, I actually let the vocal play fully. And what I did is I took basically the same instrument here where I'd sliced it to a new MIDI track and I let all the slices play in the order in which it sliced them. So it basically plays the full vocal. And I used a filter to be able to filter it down as the vocal plays. So I'm going to open Sugar Bites Wow filter that I'm using on this here. And I'll play it. Just let you hear what it sounds like. Hello, hello, baby, you called. I can't hear a thing. I have got no service in the club, you say, say, say. What, what, what did you say? Oh, you breaking up on me. Next up, we have the bit of the vocal that I grabbed from Cascade. And here, I'm using a time-stretching glitch plugin on this to create a really heavily edited sound to the vocal. So I'm using a couple of things. Let's just listen to it first so you can hear what it sounds like. And then I have an instance of Sugarbytes Effectrix plugin, which is a glitch style plugin, kind of similar to DB Blue Glitch, but I really like this one. And this is really giving that vocal the kind of time stretched feel that I want to it. I also wanted to create some vocal effects. So I use the vocal to create a reverse reverb. The reverse reverb I created by taking an audio sample of the vocal, slapping a reverb on it with a really large room size and large decay, and 
resampling that back into Ableton with the decay tail. And then I took just the decay tail and I reversed it. So it does a reverb, but in reverse into another sample. Here's what the reverse reverb sounds like. And the way I usually like to do the reverse reverbs is they'll build over time and I chop them off just before the next element comes in. So you want to leave a little bit of a gap and that allows the next element to come in to hit really hard. So you don't want it to slam right snug up against it. You want it to chop off just a little bit before so that when this piece comes in, it's really accentuated. So I'll solo both of these at the same time and it creates a nice swooshing rising effect into that vocal element. The last vocal element we'll cover is in the second breakdown again where I used a vocal sample of Lady Gaga and I jammed it into Ableton Simpler and then used a bunch of automation on Simpler to get this kind of granular um, time stretched feel to the vocal. I'll solo this so you can see what I'm talking about. Now how I did this is I automated three things on here is first of all I took the vocal sample in and I took the start point and the end point and I dragged them in just so I could have the bit of the vocal that I wanted and then I automated the sample start point the loop and the length and then I gave it a little bit of fade so that it wouldn't click and pop on me and then as you can see we'll go to the automation curves there's the automation curves for the sample start the length and the loop length. And then we have some automation going to a bit crusher and also to ascend to our dubbed out delay. This automation process in Ableton Simpler is something that I use for a lot of my sound design process. I just love the way that granular little slices sound as it washes through a sample. So one of the things I do in my sound design process is I'll set one of these up, I'll do the automation, I'll let it play, and then I just kind of jam different samples in there and resample it back in so I'm creating my own unique sounds. So I'll let this run and run and run and I'll just keep swapping new samples in and just see what comes out of it. It's a really great tool just to create some of your own effects and atmospheric sounds. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me.